Azadeki suddenly becomes logged out of his legendary age account, and after failing to log back in multiple times, he realizes a hacker has taken over his account and is chatting with Eiko. Rushing to her room to warn Akko of the imposter posing as Rujin, Hideki takes a look at their couple's chat box in which the hacked Rujin made very sussy aggressive advances on her, much to Eiko's horror. As she apologizes for briefly mistaking the hacked Rujin for the real one, Kyo and the others drop by to assess the damage done to Hideki's account. Despite eventually regaining access to his account, his character Rujin has been unfortunately terminated, and while Eiko grieves over his disappearance, the group resolves to do whatever they can to help. While Akane and Kyo score the game's shops and auction houses for Rujin's sold items, Hideki consults the guild leader, Black Magician, under a backup character named Parashiki, to help him find his items, to which he agrees to. As an Echo Heim drums up help from her guild mates, Master and Parashiki come across a merchant under the name Rontan selling some of Rujin's items at ridiculously high prices. Taking note of Rontan as a prime suspect, members of Nekoheim's elite guard manage to recover Rujin's wedding ring as a monster drop item, much to Eiko's delight. As Hideki and Kyo have a talk at school about how fragile Akko's ties to Hideki are, Kyo assures him that the tone of the chat box brought Akko back to her senses, reinvigorating Hideki. At the guild hub, the black magician sends the alley cats a URL of a hacking blog under Lon, an experienced hacker and real money trader, who recently bragged about Hideki's account hack. As such, they hatch a sinister plot to catch the hacker, the group, excluding Akko, go through hours of unknown activity over the computer. Coming to Hideki's house to check on him, Akko realizes the deletion of Rujin has also annulled their marriage, much to her shock. Putting his plan into motion, Hideki makes an RMT with a hacker who is under the name Shoko, which catches the attention of admin game master Nak. Also accused of hacking Rontan and several other characters, Shoko confronts Parashiki who gave away his IP address on the trading board Hideki, and the others made three days ago working non-stop to authenticate several years' worth of posts. While Parashiki faces a three-day suspension for an attempted RMT, GM Nyak restores Rujin's character and he and Eiko soon reinstate their marriage. The next night is an all-girls slumber party at Keo's extravagant mansion as they gather to finish their summer break homework, especially Eiko, who hasn't made any progress with it at all. Cut off from contact with Hideki as well, the other girls take this as an opportunity for Eiko to socialize without having him there, much to her chagrin. As the girls are led by a maid into Kyo's room, Akko struggles to stay focused and gets up for a bathroom trip. Distrusted by the others into believing she'll run away, Nanako walks with her and the pair soon become caught up exploring the mansion due to jerk curiosity. Eventually, stumbling upon a study with a hidden room behind the bookshelf, they become chased by the maid after discovering a secret book chronicling Kyo's growth, and the lost pair calls out to the others from the courtyard. While they decide to carry out the remainder of their work from there, Eiko's minimal progress draws the attention of a frustrated Akane. After going through dinner and bath time, Nanako asks Eiko about Hideki's preferences in girls, to which not even she doesn't know. With cell phone in hand, Eiko prepares to contact him as the others realize the troubling situation, where her video chat will leave the girls in full view of their bodies. While Eiko leads the girls on a chase, Nanako manages to calm the dilemma down as Eiko throws her the cell phone only for her to turn it off. Later, as the girls get settled in a single bed, Nanakato also questions Eiko about the views of her wife mentality, which she gives a scenario on how husbands and wives in the game and in real life have certain specific bonuses. Perceiving her as unfaithful, the girls, like a herd, quickly log into Legendary Age to confront Rujin about his views on Eiko's mentality. Fast forward to nearing the end of summer vacation, Rujin tells Eiko another story about a burden healer he met during his solo play hoping that she will see their marriage from a more realistic standpoint. Back at school again, Akane drags Hideki into the halls, lamenting on her solid reputation as a normal high schooler. Meanwhile, finding no trace of Akko yet, Hideki calls her only to realize that she has been completely oblivious of her first day at school, expecting the group to be playing the game already. As the group meets in the club room once again, they are confronted by Miss Sato, in regards to the upcoming culture festival, to which they must present their club contributions to gather students. Taking advantage of Legendary Age's recent Siege Warfare update, a PvP battle among other guilds held once every week, Keio suggests that their guild should participate in representing Megasaki High, as victors will have a banner hoisted on top of their castle for the weekend celebration. After some rounds of practice sparring, Keio finds herself in a bit of trouble after realizing Apricot's mage role is not suited for PvP, participating in the next Siege battle against a guild known as the Cleaning Crew, Alley Cats witnesses another guild storming and only to be demolished in under 10 seconds, much to their surprise. 
After being party wiped twice for the first attempt and an altercation between another guild, Master gets into even more trouble after realizing the prohibited use of premium items in Siege Warfare. Witnessing Nekoheim's elite guard siege the castle only to lose it moments later, the Alley Cats group mocks Nekoheim, much to her chagrin. While Echo gets into some trouble at school after being put in charge of her class maid cafe, Master enlists some reinforcements in the game in the form of mercenary guild Wallenstein. As such, Master and Wallenstein's leader of Bats make a formal alliance to help Alley Cats win their siege battle. Evaluating the guild members one by one, Bats gives Alley Cats a vague strategy rundown assuring that his guild can handle the dirty work, with Akane and Nanako capitalizing on his pretentious attitude. Arriving at Fort Cantor with defending guild Emperor Sword on guard, Bats instructs Aiko and Set to run across opposite sides of the castle, spreading out their stationary guards. As Ruzhin and Xuan charge the defending line, Alley Cats soon witness Wallenstein's true power as they eliminate the entire defending party with little effort, instructing the others to take cover. Once the carnage begins to clear, Echo and Set runs inside and regroups with the others, where Fort Kanner becomes captured in the name of Alley Cats. While Wallenstein takes their leave, the group feels unsatisfied with their easy victory, feeling somewhat unaccomplished. However, once their moment of reprieve is up, Bats instantly dissolves the alliance and stages a takeover on the castle, single-handedly destroying every guild member except for a grief-stricken Akko. While real-world Echo procures maid outfits from Kao's maids for her class's maid cafe, more problems arise as she neglects shift duties and serving manuals a week before the cultural festival, to which Hideki helps her classmates become notified. On the matter of taking revenge on Wallenstein, Hideki forms alliances with Nekoheim's elite guard, as well as the Dark Magician's guild TMW. With only one more siege battle before the culture festival, combined efforts be enough to take down Wallenstein. With only one chance to take back Fort Canberra from Wallenstein, Kyo explains her plan to the others of taking and defending the castle until time runs out. Upon rallying the alliance party composed of members from Nekoheim's elite guard, Yu Yun witnesses the guild Emperor Sword retake Fort Cantor as the Alliance Party, Alley Cat Princess Elite Guard, makes their move. Destroying the front gate using the guy, Set provides a distraction to the first wave of defending guards by taking advantage of the chat window, allowing Schwein to clap them in one fell swoop. Then exploiting the opening, the Alliance makes quick work of the remaining members before arriving inside and placing the Alley Cat Siege Crystal. Tasked with defending the castle for 20 minutes, the Alliance demolishes Emperor Sword's invading army using a well-executed meter spell performed by Master. With 10 minutes remaining, Wallenstein makes their return, but they quickly eliminate Q's stationary line and Ruzhin's secondary defense. However, arriving in the courtyard, Schwein's forces are shot down by their archer, until Schwein teleports in with her finishing move and destroys her. Upon arriving inside the castle, the surprises keep coming as Set gets herself finished to disable Wallenstein's abilities, and additional forces from Nekoheim's guild conduct an ambush on the remaining members, eliminating their mage and healer. As Ruzhin stalls out Wallenstein's knight, Bats arrives against Master, the lone defender of the crystal. Despite being the only thing standing in his way, Bats becomes increasingly irritated as his attacks have no effect on her. Calling upon his knight to inflict Master with a stun skill, Akko takes the stun as Bats slices her down. With Ruzhin stalling the knight and Master still immune to Bats' attacks, the group manages to hold out until Alley Cats is declared the Lords of Fort Cantor. Using a drop of Yggdrasil Ulper per hit to nullify all of her damage, Master tells Bats that despite the huge monetary loss, doing it for the sake of her friends is what made it worthwhile. Finally admitting defeat and giving respects to Alley Cats, Wallenstein gallantly takes their leave. At the Culture Festival, the Net Game Club shows off their screenshot of their most recent victory, and Echo's Maid Cafe becomes a big success. During cleanup, Ideki promises Eiko an Indian reward for staying strong during the culture festival, and while mere moments away from kissing each other, the rest of Gru comes in to talk about Legendary Age's player housing update. While Hideki tries to clear up the misunderstanding, Eiko exclaims her in-game reward is similar to a real-life one, to which Hideki shouts that the game and reality are separate, much to her frustration. 